welcome Miss Ellen Stewart. I feel like I should be a robot or something after that introduction. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ellen Stewart, uh, and as said, I'm the head of content at Pink News, which is the world's leading LGBT plus publisher. But before I start, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for having me here today. It is truly an honor to be speaking to you all in such an amazing location, despite the terrible, terrible weather. <laughs> I actually made exactly the same joke as you about. I was like, I promise I didn't bring it with me. It was raining in the UK when I left, though. <laughs> but um, so yeah, Pink News, if you're not aware, is the, one of the world's leading LGBT plus news publishers. And we attract up to 30 million unique users every single month across the globe. And I've been asked to come here and talk to you today about a subject that I sort of randomly become an expert in, which is young people. And I'm talking young people. So that's the centennials. So Gen Z, the I generation, the post-millennial, the meme-lennial, the woke generation, whatever you want to call them. I'm here to tell you who they are, how they relate to your market, and how you can connect with them in a meaningful and engaging way. So first off, the centennial's definition of what it means to be LGBT plus goes far, far beyond the L and the G. Not only are they more likely to be queer or questioning than any generation that has come before them, they also have the language to be able to kind of translate their identity and to make sense of who they are and how they relate to the rest of the world. So according to the Office for National Statistics, 2% of the population of the UK identifies as LGBT+, which I think equates to 1.1 million. There was a slide that had the number on it. Um, however, if you take away the bureaucracy, if you take away the red tape, and you ask that same question, but via YouGov, 26% of the UK population identifies as LGBT+, which I think is 14.6 million. Also, there would have been on a slide. <laughs> so that figure is kind of confusing, but what we can fairly guess is that it's likely to increase as a new generation grows up. So let's take, for example, the Kinsey scale, which will be this slide. Fantastic. Seamless. Um, <laughs> which was a measure designed by sexologist Alfred Kinsey in the late 1940s. And it essentially lays out that sexuality isn't binary. And pretty much anyone can measure themselves between either zero and six on the Kinsey scale. So zero being completely heterosexual and six being completely homosexual. So when it comes to centennials, another hopefully seamless transition they're far more likely to put themselves as either one, between one and six. Now, this graph kind of indicates that 50% of centennials are totally gay, um, which doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily work out, but what it does indicate is there is a huge shift towards fluidity. So, the change is happening pretty fast as well, and I'm really hoping that this is going to be in the right order now. It's going to be a theme of the presentation. Yes, great. So in 2015, YouGov stats showed that 28% of adults identified as not straight. And just three years later, that number had increased to 32.5%. And we expect this number to continue to increase. And while being a two on the Kinsey scale doesn't necessarily mean you'll identify as queer, it does mean you're going to be receptive to diversity, to difference, and like align yourselves with brands that champion these ideals and are all about inclusion. So unsurprisingly, recent polling suggests that 54% of queer people would have come out of the closet sooner if they had had other people to look up to, either in their communities, on their television sets, in magazines. And 66% still agree that there isn't enough LGBT representation, there isn't enough LGBT plus content when it comes to brand campaigns or advertising, and brands need to start catching up. And as I'm sure you already know, the LGBT market is one that cannot be ignored, especially as it continues to grow. They have the spending power of $3.6 trillion. They have a higher disposable income than the rest of the population. They're two times more likely to, be, um, to form a... Uh, 
<laughs> to form a relationship with a brand they trust. And 69% of LGBT plus people will kind of do your marketing for you because they consider themselves to be trendsetters. And when it comes to travel specifically, the community vacations twice as often and spends double the amount compared to the rest of the population. And let's take the UK, for example. LGBT plus people make up $14.7 billion worth of inbound travel to the UK. And honestly, I do not understand why you would go there because the weather is like it is outside all the bloody time. <laughs> weather jokes go down well if you're English. Um, but I just wanted to delve a little bit deeper into what it means to be a centennial or part of the I generation. So, essentially, it's anyone who right now is under 24 years old. They will never recall any year of prosperity before the final financial meltdown of 2008, which, if that doesn't make you feel old, then I do not know what will. <laughs> um, they spend more time at home than any generation that's come before them. And they want their information fast, and they want it hard, and they want it on demand. And finally, they trust their friends, and they even trust strangers more than they do organizations and brands. So in saying this, how can you make a connection with a centennial that actually counts? So put some bullet points up here. Feel free to take photos. <laughs> so number one, you've got to personalize everything. Centennials expect personalized communications. According to the Harvard Business Review recently, they want brands to see them as individuals rather than names or numbers on a list. So think about things like, dear customer, dear traveler, dear student email blasts, they're on the way out. It's about literally speaking to someone as if you know them. So number two, connect with them on social media and on their mobile phones. According to a 2014 survey, when researching new consumer products, 81% of centennials use social media as a resource. And as our friends at the Harvard Business Review state, brands that are not taking full advantage of the real-time engagement on social media are completely missing out on an entire generation. As always, be strategic. Fewer than half of Gen Z learn about new products from TV advertising, for example, around 44%. It's a brand's job to think about where to pull resources, where to kind of put investment, and where your target audience is living on platforms, on the internet, on mobile, et cetera, et cetera. And it's about placing them at the heart of what you're doing. And finally, you've got to excite Gen Z with the content. The I generation is constantly stimulated by content from multiple sources. And brands must produce content that engages these digital natives Focus groups have found that Gen Z want more interactive content, they want features, they want robust editorial, they want smartly designed websites, and they want to be placed in the heart of your content and see themselves in the products that you're producing. So Pink News, just to quickly come back to us, um, our biggest um, audience share are centennials. So we've become quite adept in catering content for them. So here's just a couple of examples of what we've been doing recently that have really resonated with our community. So we make it shareable. And we'll often add elements of gamification. You can ask me about that afterwards. I'll tell you what it means <laughs> into our offering. Um, we're big on audience participation, be that polls or votes or even personality quizzes. We make our content as interactive and as about the user as possible. And we're getting more tech savvy as well. We're familiar, familiarizing ourselves with virtual reality, as mad as that sounds, lenses and filters to literally transport our reader into our content. So I know that was a lot of information. It came at you like hard and fast and also a bit messed up. <laughs> but I really hope that there was something you could take away from what I've told you today and think about it when we hear from a whole set of wonderful speakers and panelists for the rest of the coming days. Um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you.